Good evening and welcome to the stream this evening. It's time I've remembered or just about remembered to change my glasses so that I can see what I'm doing. Which is probably watching things fall on the floor if I'm not careful. So I'm going to prepare this little this bit of wood which I'm going to do by just sanding it down. This will just smooth off the surface, remove any hair like bits of wood which usually get left on the surface when it's plain and generally will make it easier to colour. a lot smoother which means it will produce a better image always sanding in line with the grain otherwise you get scratches on the surface and you end up having to sand in the direction of the grain to remove them anyway you might as well do that in the first place. Brush that off. I'm also trying to get rid of the little tiny pussycat hairs which are on here because if I catch them it smells terrible. Okay. Sorry about that. Caught the mouse. Sand, do a little bit more sanding on the edge which is still a little bit rough of transfer paper and 
and image to go over the top. And a small amount of sticky tape, which I will just make sure doesn't go on the wood. We'll just keep the image in place whilst I do a quick outline over the top of it. Oops, so there's a about catching the mic. Yeah, that'll do as an outline. So let me just put that away. That just saves a heck of a lot of time. I could sit down there and draw it out. But that's not the point of, uh, of doing this. So... So we do it the easy way. I can now take that off of there. And sit that over there as a reference picture.
Okay. I just added a few uh, outlines in by hand. Just to make things a little bit easier. I'm just going to be roughly across there. Okay, right. So, I have power. So we'll start this with what's, well, one of the darkest places. But let's turn that right down to start with. So generally speaking I like to start with eyes just from the point of view if I get the eyes wrong then it um, doesn't matter about the rest actually I'm going to switch pens which means switching pens yes Switch pens because this one produces a smoother um, surface on the wood than the uh, pen that I was using. As I'm doing an eye, a, a smooth surface will look shinier, which is of advantage here.
Good evening to anybody joining the stream. You are, of course, watching, as it says in the stream title, Pyrography. You are um, not sure what that is by now. <laughs> uh, pyrography literally translates as um, firewriting. But uh, I sincerely hope you don't see any fire, and I'm certainly not writing. So I usually will translate it as being painting with heat, because that's essentially what I'm doing. This pen that I'm holding is hot, several, well, several hundred degrees, and I will be effectively painting a picture with uh, with the colour that it produces. The temperature of the tool and how long I hold it in uh, contact with the wood is what produces the different colours. And essentially I will be creating a black and white picture. On the, well, it will actually get quite black in some places like around here. And at the end, it possibly, depending on just how black I make, it may well resemble something. If you've seen them before, uh, old sepia prints. It's a similar sort of uh, colour that you generally get. So I'm just doing some outlining here. It's going to be a black background. So I'm going to do some of that first. Partly because it can be a little bit awkward to add a black background in afterwards. Uh, and partly because it's a quite a large area of black and that will affect how you and me view the other colours that are around it or the other shades. It will tend to make things look lighter than they actually are. And so if I put this in first, then I can use it and judge other colours against it. Because this edge is going really dark, I'm not bothered about the um, the pencil or the trace down mark. Uh, this will quite easily cover that. If I was going with a light edge, I would be wanting to erase it before I actually put the pyrographic pen near it, because it actually the colouring is more a process of almost cooking the wood. And it forms like a glaze on the surface, uh, which is like a varnish, which varnishes the marks in. And they're quite difficult to get out then. Now you may you may see little bits and puffs of smoke and uh, they're not ex well they're not exactly smoke it's not it's not actually oxidized burning wood it is more a vapor which is coming off the wood
So if you're expecting, as I say, to see fire, then I really hope I disappoint you. <laughs> In actual fact, I can't actually heat this particular tool up enough uh, to actually cause spontaneous combustion of the wood. So, I know I'm not going to have a problem with inappropriate fire. Now I will in a minute, once I've got round here, um, switch to using a larger pen and uh, darken this background using a larger pen. I was thinking the uh, the image looks a little bit strange at the moment, of course. Now I do want to be fairly smooth doing this because um, that way I get a smooth background without a lot of texture in it, which is what I'm after. I don't want to draw your eye to the background. So I do want the background to be as smooth as I can manage. Now you will notice some bits of this uh, outline here are going darker than others. That's literally down to the wood itself. I'm not particularly trying to uh, make any area go darker or lighter. I'm trying to be reasonably consistent about it. Uh, and just some patches of wood will, uh, will go take colour easier than others for no particularly apparent reason. And it's is quite often well it is down to the moisture contained in the cell wood fibers or the cells now in theory the drier the wood the quicker it will take color but since it's a liquid in the cell which is providing the color it's a little bit sort of um, a mix. So the drier it is, the harder it is to colour, although in theory it uh, absorbs the heat quicker. Ooh. 
A little hair just got on the tip there. And burning hair does not, well, heated hair doesn't smell very nice. To say the least. Now there is a slight smell like similar to what you do get with burning wood. So on a, an open fire for example. It's, uh, that's only because I am actually darkening this off quite a lot. If I wasn't doing it then there's virtually no smell. Uh, and if I do get a smell it's more like sort of warm wood than it would actually be sort of like wood smoke or burning wood. down to the sh shoulders on this side as well. And across to the edge of the wood. Now when you're applying pyrography to the edge of wood, always go on the wood to off the wood otherwise you'll burn the edge more than you expect. mainly because you can't actually smoothly transition off the, from off the wood onto the wood so the pen does tend to stop and when it stops it applies more heat and therefore gets darker doing it the other way it's a lot easier to uh, to transition off the wood just by dragging it over the edge and therefore you maintain speed and maintain the colour Okay, I am now going to switch pens and actually try with a larger shader pen. So I'll just get rid of my detail pen or my pencil pen. Switch over and use this. Now this is a larger tip. So the larger tip of course should allow me to do this a little bit faster. Now I can turn, I need to turn this up actually. Now afterwards, when I turn this into a time lapse, this will look really fast. And I can probably even have some more heat on this.
Now because I'm making this go really dark I'm not bothered about blobs which I would normally be concerned about. Blobs being dark endpoints or points where you go over the same place twice or more times uh, which darkens, uh, darkens it because the colour is additive um, now I want this the background virtually as dark as I will say as dark as I can make it because I can make it um, really black and carbonized but that actually doesn't look as good so I don't quite want to get to the stage of carbonizing it but I do want to get it quite dark uh, which means any blobs just help fill in Unfortunately, one of the problems in pyrography on stream is that I need quite a large or bright light to help you guys see. But that bright light reflects off of this black because it's quite shiny. Off the pyrography in general, actually. And sometimes makes it difficult for me to see what I'm doing. And if you heat up wood like this, it becomes a rather wax-like. And then you, you get marks in the surface. Which I hadn't realised I was getting and I'm now trying to avoid. I thought I was avoiding them, but I wasn't. And avoiding the marks basically means not putting a lot of pressure on the wood. And the consequences of that is it doesn't transfer heat quite as easily. Now because I'm taking this quite dark, there's a lot of vapour which is coming off the wood. Which 
you're probably able to, well, I suspect you might be able to see. Now the interesting thing about the, um, the, the webcam that I'm using here is it's quite, um, it's got a slightly odd color rendition. Um, it doesn't quite truly represent color. And so one of the things you're seeing here is this is virtually black, whereas to me it's a really dark brown. To actually get the wood as dark as um, it, it's appearing on camera, uh, actually takes quite a lot of effort. Especially to get it smooth. There are a few techniques that could be done to uh, uh, to increase the smoothness, and that includes sort of, um, for example, moving this pen in little small circles. But one thing that I found when I want to try and get something really dark is that doing that is really hard not to put pressure on the on the wood and putting pressure on the wood would create a um, a texture a series of sort of lines or dips on the wood which then reflect light slightly differently and so um, I don't actually find for my style of working Perhaps because I've not practiced enough, but I don't find that a, a particularly useful technique for me. And that is part of the skills that you develop as you uh, do more and more pyrography. Is you learn what things work for you and what things don't. You also learn things like how you know how hot a pen you're comfortable working with. I probably could turn this one up a little bit. And just how comfortable you are doing certain things in certain orders and things like that. Now I do know this particular pen, and it's one of the things that you sort of learn about your tools that this particular pen for example uh, the right hand edge of it is hotter than the left which can be interesting sometimes which is one reason why I don't actually use this particular shader that much I'm trying it here because it's a larger uh, it's got a larger surface area and I am trying to cover quite a lot of area here. Now I should do this. The wood is actually drying out. And as wood dries out it shrinks. And that's what's causing the surface texture. Uh, what I'm trying to do is effectively iron that out and make it smooth. Uh, it, it's a little bit like um, uh, applying pyrography at this sort of heat level is a little bit like some carving techniques which just scoop out bits of wood 
hot on the surface in like a shallow, just shallow little tiny uh, bowls. Um, because the wood is shrinking away from the uh, from the tool. Now sometimes, like uh, you know, anything, that sort of thing can be useful if that's an effect that you're after. It can produce a, um, an interesting lighting effect. It's sometimes called orange peel uh, because it's like an orange skin. Little tiny, tiny dimples, sort of thing you might see on a golf ball if you're more familiar with those. Now one of the things I find hard to do uh, whilst I'm doing this is actually slow down enough. I generally like working quite fast. And generally speaking if you're working with a, a hot uh, pen you generally do want to move quite fast so that you don't get really dark lines like this. The faster you move the lighter the line that you provide or produce. So generally speaking you are working uh, are trying to work quite quickly. But of course I get a more darker area by slowing down. Interestingly, like areas like that, which are effectively just the light reflecting off slightly, it looks lighter. And like across there, it's just the way in which the light is reflected. Now this is a commissioned portrait, so I was about to say I'm being really careful. I'd be very careful anyway, even if it wasn't. If it was one something for me, I would also be really careful. But because it's commissioned it won't be me that's judging how good it is it will be of course the person that's paid for it which is a completely different perspective on art sometimes uh, when you're not the one that's the recipient
In actual fact, you often have sort of two conflicting things. One of is, of course, you're not the one that's uh, viewing it, therefore, you know, you have to have a sort of a different uh, perspective on it. Um, it's not what you like, it's what the person that um, is paying for it likes, of course. But also, artists do also tend to be somewhat really critical of their own work. Uh, which other people will never see. And so uh, one of the one of the hardest things to do when you're uh, doing commissioned work is knowing the right place or right time to stop. As artists, we often will spend a lot of time on an image with the in quotes final touches, and. Uh, we're often not particularly satisfied with our own work. As I say, knowing the right point to stop to say, well, you know, um, that is uh, exactly what uh, was intended. Is is the trick. I'm probably going to spend most of this stream just making this black. Keep trying here just to to almost hover the the tip of this tool on the wood. It doesn't actually have to touch because obviously it's hot, heat radiates, um, but you do get better heat transfer, of course, if you are actually in contact with the wood. But if I put much pressure on the wood, as I say, I mark it quite a lot, and I. We don't want a lot of background texture. What I ought to be doing here as well is running a small fan. And if I do this sort of thing normally off stream, I'd be running a, an extractor in front of me just to pull the, uh, that vapour away from me.
you can almost iron the wood um, when it gets hot I mentioned it gets quite soft almost wax like and so you can go back over it and smooth out texture which is just what I'm doing there I'd created some texture it's quite hard actually with a oh I'm finding it quite hard with this particular pen um, to actually hold it flat on the wood a tendency to tip it up towards one side which most of the time is not particularly a problem um, but when I'm trying to create a smooth surface it is <laughs> Now doing this does give me the opportunity to try out a couple of different or two or three different ways of producing the uh, the dark background. So I can experiment a little bit. I have said um, I try not to produce a lot of uh, background texture and I've also mentioned how you can sometimes get like an orange peel effect one of the things I am noticing here is the texture I'm getting on the background at the moment is rather like that you'd find on old religious icons or which are made from wood or something like that where the background has been shaped with hand tools so they're an example of something like that um, you know, old church pews uh, wood panelling in old buildings that sort of thing uh, you get you actually get a texture and a colouring somewhat similar to this. As I mentioned, although you're seeing it as black, it, it's actually showing here as a really dark brown. Now wood doesn't conduct heat very well, which is why it cooks really quickly, <laughs> but also why you can get quite sort of straight sharp edges on the wood when you apply pyrography to it. But to do that you have to use the right end of the uh, end of the tool. So the end which is nearest to my hand here it's, it's quite fuzzy because the weight of the shape of the tool means that it's the very back is not quite in contact with the wood and therefore it heats up a little bit and gives it a lighter colour than the rest of the tool which is in contact with the wood but the front if you can see it here um, what's called the toe is producing quite sharp straight um, edges mm. 
No, not Molly. I'll run the tool, but I'll try it backwards, as I call it. So from this end, this way. Because one of the reasons for that is the back of the tool, as I say, isn't quite in contact with the wood, but it does tend to preheat it. So it takes colour a lot more easily when I pass the toe of the tool over. But as I'm trying to get a smooth surface, um, it's producing more of a texture that way. So by going forward, I actually iron out the texture. So I shall continue going in this direction. Now this particular pen that I'm using here is called a heavy duty pen which means it's got a thicker body than some of the other pens that you can use with this particular uh, equipment which is quite useful because I'm using this at quite high heat and the thicker body means that it stays cooler which means my fingers stay cooler which means I can continue doing this for quite some time. In actual fact, in doing this sort of work with this pen, uh, I can do it for several hours. The pen itself doesn't really heat up that much to become uncomfortable. If I was working with the uh, the fine nibbed pen, drawing nib as I tell, writing nib, at this particular heat setting, um, the body would uh, because it's a thin body, it's a lighter duty pen. Um, that body would heat up too much and be uncomfortable to use after about 30 minutes or so. It might not seem like this is much fun doing this, but actually it's quite enjoyable. Mainly because, I was about to say there's not much skill involved in it, there is actually quite a bit of skill involved in it, but what I mean is um, I'm not uh, trying to create specific shades, or have to be particularly careful about where the lines go, uh, I don't have to create any worry about creating blobs. And so, you know, I can just concentrate on filling in the, filling in the space.
Now you might just be able to see that in the light. You see, it slightly has a slightly blotchy look. Again, that's just down to the wood itself. So it may well be that what I will have to do is just come over this again. just to make sure I have a, a more consistent colour. Because whilst you will see it in a lot of light, if this is um, somewhere where sunlight might strike it, and it's actually not a necessarily a good idea to put pyrography in sunlight, because it does tend to fade, but um, you will if you did put it in under a bright light, for example, you will see that sort of mottled effect, as well as the shiny one that you're seeing there. Now, one of the things I'm doing here as well is I'm keeping going in the same direction, and I will do it across here because you can see the tool marks, they're horizontal. If I switch to vertical, um, it would look not very good. Funny how your brain sometimes takes over. Um, as I put this tool down, I was creating a slightly black blob and I was trying uh, to rapidly pull away from it. Um, and of course I don't need to do that. Just as an inbuilt reaction to, uh, to seeing a blob develop. Yeah, I'm still experimenting a little bit with this pen, trying to work out the best angle to hold it at, to get the best coverage uh, in the uh, in the most rapid way. Because I do like to work uh, quite rapidly. Obviously it's more fun to get a result that you're after quickly than it is to spend several hours to get a result. Especially if you could do it in 10 minutes.
and sometimes you know holding holding a pen in a particular way using it in a particular technique can produce effects really quickly for example I know as I mentioned earlier the right hand side of this pen heats up more than the left so if I can keep the right hand edge in contact with the wood um, it will go darker quicker And it might not be, it's not as easy as it might sound. <laughs> One of the things I do need to watch out a little bit for when I'm working at this darkness of tone is you do get a build up of the glaze the, the brown stuff on the bottom of the uh, the pen uh, and it actually um, almost forms like sharp crystals and it can actually start to scratch the wood as you're working um, that's something you sort of if you feel like you just stop and clean the pen but uh, it is something that I uh, I do have to keep an eye out on because sometimes you just kind of don't realise it has happened until you suddenly start seeing score marks across the uh, across the wood. Now that's not particularly smooth. Yeah, that's, and by that I mean smoothing colour rather than, smooth, rather than smoothing texture. Uh, one of the things I have to avoid doing is, and it's kind of a natural thing that people do, is if it's not quite going dark enough, they tend to uh, press uh, down on the pen. Now, that does make a little bit of difference because that's um, Increased pressure means you get slightly better contact with the wood, it transfers the heat better and quicker and therefore it does go brown slightly quicker but um, and it also obviously pushes the surface around. It's a little spot of carbonisation, which is uh, not what I'm after. When it carbonises, although it goes black, it goes like a matte black. Um, and it's quite rough. It forms like carbon crystals or little flecks of, of carbon. Now the different areas of wood texture also have an impact on doing this. So the wood grain itself gets involved. If you, well, you probably, well you can just about see there's a line there which is part of the ring structure of the tree that this top surface was cut from. 
and uh, that dark, slightly darker colour is actually harder to, to colour, there's less moisture in it. Uh, and it does show up often as a lighter area. If you can just see, you can't actually, but I can. You can see like a line across there, which is the actual um, ring edge. The other thing about the ring, um, the ring edge there is that it doesn't uh, shrink away as much. Pine is the worst for doing that, but uh, even here on birch plywood, uh, it does happen. Uh, and of course, that tends to um, impart its own texture. It's only really more noticeable with uh, with high heat levels like this, or when you're going uh, applying as much heat as this, should I say? Because um, I can apply heat more slowly, but for longer, and it will still do exactly the same thing. So this colour is a result of quantity of heat, not particularly the time it takes or the actual temperature of the pen. If I hold a cooler pen in contact with the wood for longer, I can get exactly the same colour. And probably I've just applied exactly the same quantity of heat. Looks like this may even take three streams. That's uh, probably about four hours or so just to do this background. Now, although I'm not worried about black blobs, because I am concerned about consistent colour, and I still do need to apply some of the same techniques as I would to avoid the dark blobs, just in that I am landing and taking off the pen like an aeroplane does. So it's moving before it lands and it's moving when it takes off. And that actually is what stops the uh, black blobs from forming, but it also helps me create a more consistent colour as well. Now this pen is actually maxed out. So this pen is actually turned up as hot as it will go. In actual fact, this sort of work is perhaps, or could be better suited to um, to the soldering iron style of um, pyrographic pens. Just because they have um, bigger heaters, basically, and a lot more heat storage.
Yeah, you see, I'm not actually getting much colour there. Let me just turn that pen down for the moment, give it a chance to cool off, and I'm going to clean the, clean the tip. Now, although I said cool down, that cool down is still a couple of hundred degrees at least. And then I'm going to clean the tip by just rubbing it on paper, tissue paper for that. As you can see, it's not even making it brown. Although if I did hold it on there, I probably would go straight through um, the wood. Don't forget paper is wood, it's wood fibre. Well, generally speaking, it's wood fibre. You actually can see I'm ironing the wood here. By mining the paper so that the little um, dots are disappearing. Uh, and you can apply pyrography to paper. It's easier on thicker paper than it is on thin paper like this, but um, yeah, it's, it's a hot tip, it will burn you quite easily, and yet yeah, it didn't touch, do anything to the, uh, to the paper. Now I cleaned the tip there because I was getting consistent colouring as you can see around here. In actual fact I'm not getting a... This pen is, as I say, this pen is turned actually up and I'm actually going to turn it down. because um, I'm, I'm not getting as good a colouring as I was with the temperature slightly lower. And what could be happening there is quite literally it is too hot and it's um, uh, driving the, the glaze which forms away from the tip more than or even just you know converting it straight into that uh, vapor rather than putting it down on the wood Yep, I'm getting better colour coverage with the temperature turned down slightly.
That may seem that I'm not getting very far doing this. Um, yet yeah, this black background is at least half the um, half the area of this image. And the rest of the image won't be as dark as this. So this is like taking um, a pencil on an A4 sheet of paper and scribbling in it on it to make it black. That's not grey, but black to multiple um, layers and uh, doing it with zero gaps. Pencil will still be quicker, I suspect, but um, that's just sort of an illustration. I like the black backgrounds, but one of the reasons why I don't do them very often, um, apart from the fact that you have to think about it and do it in advance. Well, you don't, but it's easier sometimes to do it in advance. Um, it does take quite a long time. <laughs> Now, of course, usually when you see pyrography on YouTube, for example, and I've done the same uh, with uh, with one of mine, is that um, the videos are often time lapsed, so this looks to go quite quickly. Here, of course, you're seeing it in real time. Super speedy! Aye, I could do with some of that super speediness uh, here, but unfortunately it doesn't happen. Indeed, how are you doing? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? I actually understood what HBU means. Quite often I'll ask what the TLAs are about. Uh, I'm not doing too bad, thank you very much. It's been an interesting Christmas and a really busy time just before Christmas with work, which stopped me streaming for quite a while. Just because of the quantity of work that needed to be done meant I was working late hours, but um, I'm hoping I'm back to more regular streaming now. And uh, 
trying to uh, well trying to get other things up and running as you can well you might see in the bottom left hand corner there if you weren't didn't notice it uh, I now have my website up and running it needs more work done on it but it's uh, it's actually live now which is uh, something I've been trying to do for quite some while just as an alternative location um, allows me to uh, to explain a little bit more about the various crafts and, and the images of each of them and things as well as having its own shop um, which doesn't have very much in it at the moment the Etsy shop's the one that's got everything in it but uh, I'll gradually build the website one up as well and I have started putting um, some time-lapse uh, videos onto YouTube as well. Yeah, uh, I um, just before Christmas for about four weeks I just virtually n never went on Twitch at all until quite late on at night and that was sort of just for about half an hour just while I had a drink before I went to bed. Um, and even now I'm still don't don't watch Twitch a great deal, mind you. It, I do. I don't know if you how you found it, but over Christmas and even now it seems really quiet. Does Twitch? Yeah, thanks for the offer there, uh, Super Speedy, but um, it's not something, it's, um, how's the, how can I put this, uh, what I'm trying to say is, it's not programming that I need, it's just the time to write the content. <laughs> um, it's done using a I, I, it's done using a content management system, so um, it, it really is just content. That's the uh, uh, the slowdown on it, not um, not the programming. Things like, um, but th again, thank you for the offer. Things like, um, you know, when I when I come home from work on an evening, it's um, it's it's get you know come home, get a, do one or two other sort of jobs that need doing, then it's time to stream, uh, and then uh, when I finish stream, it's there's just time to have a drink before going to bed, and it's kind of like trying to fit in you know half an hour to write a, a web page you know the content for a web page is just uh, challenging uh, and even sort of uh, because um, um, I think I mentioned it on stream before we are having some building work done which will give me a lovely brand new studio when it's complete but that's that's going to take quite some time uh, weekends are, um, are taken up preparing for that work that's going on uh, and again it's um, you know you spend all day sort of doing an activity for that and then it's uh, it's streaming and then it's time to go to bed
Well, of course, if they're interested, and one of the things I'm, you know, one of the things I'm not, um, not interested in, shall we say, is false stuff. You know, you know, like you, it's possible uh, on Twitch to do things like buy viewers or buy followers and things like that, and it's kind of like I don't see the point. Um, so I would say by all means uh, invite them to take a look but if they don't want to follow it they don't have to if they're not interested they're not interested um, you know um, artificially inflating it just doesn't really serve much of a much of a purpose I'd much rather people sort of you know look for themselves and if they're interested fine so the advertising is fine but it but not sort of um, you know, hey, just go and uh, just put a like on this page just because. I know a lot of people on uh, things like Facebook and YouTube and whatever. You, they, you know, that's how they would want to work. But yeah. Well, thank you. That would be kind. As I said, no. No pressure on people. I don't um, don't expect them to uh, to follow or or watch it just for the sake of it. And of course, you take a look. If you're not interested in following it, then you might not want to tell them about it because then it would be kind of like recommending something that you're not interested in, and that's always makes people suspicious they might not want you to run the group anymore <laughs> yeah thank you for doing that Even though you know this is this is part of the uh, part of the art and the craft, there are, uh, and I quite enjoy sort of black back creating black backgrounds like this. It's still quite a lot of work. <laughs> the odd thing is, I'm making a lot of progress in doing it, but it's the same progress. So I am getting a little bit impatient with this. I might switch and do uh, a little bit more of the portrait, but um, I have found from experience that with black backgrounds, it is a good idea to uh, to do them sort of up front because they they have an impact upon the how you perceive the colour of the rest of the image. just um, if you're gonna post a link let me just permit you super speedy otherwise you'll get um, it by uh, by Moobot there you go um, I won't take a look on the stream but I will do when I uh, after I finish the stream you for the link I'll uh, say I'll, uh, I'll I'll take a look after the stream but uh...
Ah, there we go. That's like the glaze that's on the bottom of the uh, on the pen, and sometimes, like as I was doing then, I wasn't getting any colour, and it's it's because it forms like a a protective shell on the bottom of the um, the pen. Mind you, there are sometimes some areas of the wood, and this is one of them, that just does not want to take colour. <laughs> wow. You even got a business plan. That's a good thing. I should sort mine out a little bit better as well. What I'm used to or what you're used to, you mean? They are biography or... I've been doing pyrography for several years now. Actually, as long as I've been doing carving. Actually, it's longer than I've been... Is it longer than I've been doing carving? Almost as long as I've been airbrushing. I'm trying to think now. Uh, airbrushing was what kind of got me back into doing art, and then probably the pyrography came next, I think. Exilian, good evening, and welcome to the stream this evening. I'm a long pen. This pen is just at this point in the wood. It's probably the wood, but it's making uh, itself quite difficult. I get a really consistent colour and it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult. Just said that twice, but uh, yeah, just doesn't want this. This pen is running really quite hot, and it just does not want to take colour. There's a ring, which I hadn't noticed. That's why it didn't want to take colour.
<laughs> uh, actually, you can't see the guidelines that easily. Uh, there are guidelines on here, um, as you might just be able to see them. So, uh, but they are only literally guidelines. They're just there to because it's quicker to do, uh, and I'd use it using a tracing technique. It's it's I could draw it. But since it, essentially the idea is to represent uh, what's on a photograph um, using the same sort of pose, it, it's uh, and um, you essentially use it as a complete reference. It's a heck of a lot easier just to uh, to use the photograph and trace through it to create the outline. All the rest will be done freehand, but um, it helps enormously with. Um, Placing things like eyes in the right place. But yes, I kind of like um, pyrography because it's, it is kind of instant. Although, I, um, generally speaking, I don't um, I don't go from no colour to this this colour this quickly anywhere else it's only because I'm doing a, a dark background that um, I'll, I'll go uh, through this color range this quickly I am not getting here I don't know and just this uh, if I didn't know better, I'd say this pen was running cold, but it's not. Well, it's turned right up. I, I guess, I suppose the possibility is that, because I've been running this pen now at this heat setting for about two hours, it could be that the, um, the control unit is overheating and shutting down a little bit. I'm just trying to get a consistent colour, mainly because I don't want to have to go over it again. Which, if I don't get a reasonably consistent colour, will have to do so. Yeah, I was about to do just that. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's not dangerously hot or anything like that, but the control unit is quite hot. So it probably is throttling its heat, a little, uh, throttling its um, current back a little bit. I mean, this is um, this is running at one about one and a half volts, I think it is, or two volts. Um, but uh, it's probably about fifteen. Would it be running about? It's running about twenty watts. So yeah, it's running about ten amps of current. So. I'm just going to finish off this half, so I'm just going to come do this white bit at the bottom here. And then I will uh, give the unit time to uh, to cool off to, to the next stream.
Twenta, hello, good evening, welcome to the stream. You've uh, come in close to the end, but uh, not quite finished yet. I could say I'm fighting with this pyrographic pen. I'm not exactly fighting with it, but it's um, it's certainly not running at its correct temperature. Uh, I think the uh, I've been running this pen now for a couple of hours, and I think the uh, control unit's getting a bit um, a little bit warm. Now, because part of this colouring is like a glaze which comes on the surface of the wood, as I run the pen over it, some of the transfer there is actually like me pushing liquid over the surface. And you can actually lighten an area of um, pyrography sometimes by doing that. Just dragging the um, the pen over the over the area, pushing like the liquid glaze um, out and off off the edge. That's not quite the consistent colour I was after. Uh, in fact, up this top end here, it's quite a lot lighter. But that is partly down to the wood. Um, you can quite, I don't know if you can see, but there's quite clearly a tree ring there. And so this area of the, uh, the tree has a different... Um, the wood's slightly different, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, and that makes it uh, come up a different colour. So I'm probably going to need to go back over this. area because to me it stands out as uh, significantly lighter. I'm not going to be going over it all tonight. I'm just uh, it's 
sort of experimenting. Still quite light, but it's better. But let's give this machine time and chance to uh, to cool off. And yeah, I mean, it's a metal cased um, controller. So I probably wouldn't want to put my hand on the transformer inside, not for the electricity point of view, but because that's going to be quite hot. If the case is hot, the, inter the transformer inside is going to be quite hot. Because it's not a switch mode power supply, it's actually a, a real transformer in there. Um, so there's about half the background on tonight of this, um, of this image. So the next bit will be, the next bit, tomorrow night stream, will be to do this bit down here. It probably will take the stream tomorrow night as well to do that because it's um, it's about half the area um, that needed to be done and then I can get on to doing the um, the rest of the image itself probably starting with the glasses which are silver but they show black so because of the way the lights reflecting off them so I will um, probably outline the glasses and maybe do a little bit more work in the eyes uh, and then we'll go from there I always look at a portrait like this and go I never actually know where to start eyes are the ones that I always do first um, just because if you get the eyes wrong you might as well forget it <laughs> start again because um, the eyes are the important part that's what everybody sees and if they look odd they won't look at the rest of the uh, of the image so getting the eyes right so you might as well rather than do all the work on the rest first and then do the eyes and mess them up right at the end if you're going to mess them up you might as well do it at the start before you've wasted all the rest of the work um <laughs> moobot has been quiet most of the evening and now is quite chatty Yes, indeed. Well, it, it is drawing. I'm just drawing with heat, or, or as I describe it, painting with heat. Um, it, it's exactly like drawing, you know. Um, I'm just using heat. Instead of using graphite, um, I use heat. But it's it's almost exactly the same sorts of techniques that get used. Um, I mean, there are some techniques of using a pencil that you can't actually replicate with a with tool like keeping the tip sh uh, sharp by spinning the pencil as you draw I don't need to do that but um, essentially you know you can lay the pencil down on its side to get wider strokes I can do the same thing with the, with the heated tips or I can go up on the end to get sharp sharp lines uh, you can cross hatch you can shade you can go over an area you've shaded uh, to make the colour darker you can do exactly the same thing with a pyrographic pen it just feels more permanent, of course. It's a bit like doing it with an ink version, like maybe a felt tip pen rather than a pencil. Um, it's sort of got more permanence to it, but it's exactly the same sort of thing again. But anyway, we will say that's it for... That image looks a little odd until I get some more colour in it. Um, we will say that's it for tonight. Um, for those people that are watching, I'll point out the advertisement at the bottom left there for all the places that you are encouraged to follow me at my own website zaraganart.com facebook of course etsy where the shop is as well as on my own site so jewelry on the shop 
may put some of the of the pyrography in there in the future. I'm going to watch export regulations with wood products, but which I need to do some work on before I can put stuff in there. But you know, uh, jewelry is the easiest stuff to start with, and of course Twitter and YouTube. You kind of got to do a search for me on YouTube because I can't get a URL, a friendly URL just yet. I'm going to have so many followers on YouTube before they'll let you have your own nice and friendly uh, URL, but I'll get there. Yeah, well, I kind of understand what you mean, but that's that's the uh, that's kind of the trick to get over is worrying about messing it up if you mess it up. What's the worst? You start again. That's the worst. The best is you fix it. If you don't ever do it, you can't ever make a mistake. <laughs> uh, so I am going to say follow me on Twitch. That way you'll get notified when I go live. Follow me on Twitter. You'll get a tweet when I go live. Both are just as good as each other. Or if you just want to try and catch me tomorrow... Should be from about 8 p.m. UK time, 20 hundred hours, UTC or GMT, they're both the same. Or about two hours and 25 minutes ago, it was 8 o'clock here in the UK. So that time, roughly tomorrow. Thanks everybody, have a good evening, and hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye bye.